Hello, everyone. Welcome to our inaugural RHB sectorial series in collaboration with Bursa Malaysia. I would like to take you through some administrative notes. Please be informed that this event is five CPE points accredited. There are two forms that you will need to fill up accordingly. The first form is the sign-in form. If you have yet to fill up this form, kindly do so before 12.10 p.m. You may submit the forms at the registration counter outside. The second form is the sign-out form. You are required to fill up and submit this form during the tea break at 3.15 p.m. And the cutoff time for the submission is at 4.45 p.m. after the event ends. The submission of forms will be at the counter in front of the tea thread. We will have a Q&A after each of the presentations by our respective guest speakers in each of the sessions. Should you have any questions, kindly raise your hand and our RHB team will usher you to the floor mic at the center of the stage for you to ask them the question accordingly. If you have any questions for us pertaining to today's sessions, or if you need any assistance during the event, feel free to reach out to any of our RHB committee members and they would be more than happy to assist you. Senior management of RHB Investment Banking Berhad our honorable host and partner in collaboration for today's event, Bursa Malaysia Berhad, esteemed speakers and moderators for our event today, RHB and Malaysia's Bursa Malaysia's committee members who has helped make this event a reality, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and thank you for joining us today. I'm Alia Nurizani, your MC for today's event, and I'm honored to welcome you to our inaugural RHB sectorial series in collaboration with Bursa Malaysia, focusing on the healthcare sector. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin our session that we all have been waiting for, the first expert talk session. Our guest speaker for today is Ms. Shalani Andrea Pandian. Ms. Shalani is the Senior Manager from the Corporate Strategy Department at Malaysia Healthcare Travel Council, or as we know it as MHTC. Ms. Shalani has about 13 years of business strategy development experience across various industries, including eight years in the healthcare industry, and not to mention, is a regular speaker at industry events as well as conferences. In this first session with MHTC, among the topic of discussion would be, how are the recovery trend of foreign tourists to Malaysia post-pandemic, and what are the outlook for 2023? What are the key competitive advantage Malaysia had in attracting foreign tourists for medical tourism? And lastly, the key measures and MHTC role in fostering the growth of Malaysia health tourism. Without further ado, I will now like to invite and hand over the mic to our moderator for today, Mr. On Chung Song, Research Analyst from Equity RHB Investment Bank, to lead the session. Over to you, Mr. Chun Song. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chun Song. Thanks for having me here today. Well, uh, Malaysia's strength as a leading health uh, travel destination in the region has been strengthening uh, over the past 10 years with accolades, uh, recognitions, and the returnings of patients has actually exemplifying its success. <clears throat> with health tourism revenue growing at 10% annual uh, CAGR from 2016 to 2019, uh, which is the pre-pandemic times. Our country continued to demonstrate strong resilience uh, following the upliftment of international uh, travel uh, restriction back in 2022. In fact, uh, our health tourism revenue has recovered to 78% of pre-pandemic levels uh, back in 2022. As Malaysia continued to fortify its positions, in the space of health, tour health tourism, we shall find out how will MHDC plays out its role in bringing our health tourism service to a new chapter of success. With me today, let us give a round of applause <coughs> to Ms. Shalani, who is the Senior Manager from Corporate Strategy Department under MHDC, to share her thoughts 
on Malaysia health tourism industry. Over to you, Ms. Shalani. looking at sorry can you hear me <laughs> sorry all right um, so a very good afternoon everyone uh, this is definitely an honor to be here uh, speaking about medical tourism malaysia so when we say about medical tourism right um, this is not something very new or abnormal it's all about uh, exporting malaysia healthcare so we have we we call this as export service. Yeah? Uh, we do export goods, but how do we export service, especially in medical? It is by attracting foreign patients to come to Malaysia to spend uh, money in getting them treated. All right. So now let's look at um, the global outlook. What are global trends that would shape the healthcare industry? So we see that uh, the worsening of diseases, especially chronic diseases that require long-term monitoring. We see aging population that's going to also require long-term healthcare monitoring. And we see shift in healthcare workforce because of the shift in care that is being de delivered. Post-pandemic, we see this happening um, you know, a lot more than how it was pre-pandemic. We see community care uh, you know, being adopted a lot more, and we see that there's growing um, workforce in this particular segment. We also see acceleration in digital adoption. We have been hearing this for, um, for I think, a few years. But for those who are very new to healthcare, um, there is a sudden increase in digital adoption fueled by the pandemic, all right? Next, um, we also see ra raising healthcare consumerization where patients are making decisions about their healthcare, especially in preventing the onset of any diseases um, uh, such as chronic diseases. Yeah? There's a lot of involvement from patients themselves. Next would be transition to value-based care. So now we see a lot of healthcare providers are bundling care to provide a holistic value to, to, to uh, patients, all right? And we also um, are seeing emergence of new ecosystem powered by patient centricity, all right? We will be looking a lot more on how this is working, yeah? How, how do I do this? Okay. Okay, let's look at the demand. Now, Asia Pacific, this part of the world, is the top tourism destination globally. So we have India, we have Malaysia, we have Japan, we have, name them, Thailand, South Korea, all here in this part of the world where there's a huge traffic from other... Can you hear me if I speak without the mic? Yeah? Okay, cool. Thank you. 
foreign patients. So those are some of the milk drivers. And this is uh, the outlook in terms of industry performance. So you see from 2011 to 2019, pre-pandemic, we saw a growth of 16% CAGR. And this like sharp drop in 2020 and 2021 because of the global pandemic. Even so, we still got patients coming into Malaysia to a very strict uh, travel bubble. That, that was uh, you know, monitored by MOH together with uh, MHDC. Then when the border was opened on 1st April, we see 1.3 billion in revenue from only three quarters here. Yeah? So that is about 76% of 2019 pre-pandemic revenue performance. So that shows there's huge trust on Malaysia healthcare system regionally and locally. So we forecast, based on this, we forecasted a potential revenue of 2 billion by 2025, and the stretch target would be 2.4 billion, the uh, stretching 20% more than what we forecast here. So you must be wondering if this 2B, right? But this 2B is actually medical bills, actual medical bills. So Malaysia is the only country in the world for medical tourism that collects actual medical bills, uh, at, I mean, use actual medical bills, bills as our revenue projection for future. And we have a spillover effect for into other economic areas like transport, accommodation, you know, FNB, tourism, and so on. So with, say, 2 billion medical receipts alone, we have a spillover of four that would be 8 uh, billion, 8 to 10 billion in 2025. So here, um, we are also developing a strategy to recover, rebound uh, economy by 2025. Um, I know that uh, we are looking at 2023, now it's 2023, so let's look at how future going to look like in the next two years. So we are uh, working to become the best healthcare travel experience provider regionally by 2025 through our medical excellence, service excellence, and enhancing seamless journey across all touch points in the ecosystem. We also want to position Malaysia as a destination regionally for healthcare. And also our value propositions are affordability, quality, safety, and hospitality. So we have three pillars, ecosystem, brand, and also markets. We're very targeted in the markets that we approach to bring in uh, medical tourists. Um, about 70-80% of our revenue and volume is coming from Indonesia. Um, we also, the second in rank would be China. We have a lot of China uh, patients coming to Malaysia for IVF treatments. And uh, we do have Australians coming here, especially for uh, bariatric IVF and also uh, uh, pediatric and aesthetic. Next. Okay, let's look at how uh, the journey, I mean, this. How we are planning to accelerate healthcare travel journey through digitalization. So here, um, because uh, pandemic actually, uh, we looked at how pandemic accelerated digital adoption through uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning. There's also need um, to have. Okay. There's also need for preventive care. So we are looking at the use of technologies that will help. Um, doctors and healthcare workers to predict the onset of disease with the help of technology. We are already working with uh, Genomics um, Malaysia Genomics Research Center to incorporate genomic screening into our healthcare um, services, right? So we are working on that. So with all this, we see that Patient centricity in healthcare is very important moving forward. And we are seeing a lot of stakeholders are coming in, showing interest, and started to invest in various technology that would improve uh, the process, infrastructure.
that would improve integration. We are also looking at technology that, that are um, highly scalable to support patient centricity uh, of the future. Right? So here is a um, patient journey that uh, we actually uh, drew. We have pre-hospital experience, hospital experience, and post-treatment experience. And across all touch point, we need technology to enhance the experience, right? MHTC is investing a lot on pre-hospital experience, where we leverage technology to provide information to patients to make the right decision when medical need arise. So um, one of it, later we will be looking at all the initiatives that MHTC is doing. So for hospital level uh, experience, we are also encouraging hospital to continue to improve quality medical excellence, service excellence um, at hospital level, yeah? right from the point that patient come in uh, to discharge as well. And post-treatment would be everything that's you know, monitoring related. Right. Malaysia is still uh, you know, developing this. There's a lot of potential of investment in this particular area. So now, let's look at what MHTC is doing to provide seamless experience through digital component. So this is the uh, ecosystem. Patient, um, international patient, yeah? they come in, and then there is regulators also involved, right? And then information is another key component. So here... MHTC is developing a one-stop portal together with uh, a vendor. This will uh, serve as a one-stop destination, an informative platform about everything uh, Malaysia healthcare. So you want to know top treatment in Malaysia. You want to know the hospitals. You want to know our USPs. You want to know how are we so different compared to all the regional competitors. What makes us special? Our regulation, how safe you are when you are in Malaysia, our success rate, everything you can get it here. So we have phase one developed and up and running. And we are in the midst of developing you know, phase two, which is to make this a transactional platform where patients, international patients, can come in and pre-book their appointments, health screening, genomic screening, and so on. For that, we are working with uh, government stakeholders, private hospital players, pharma companies, and so on, right? This, um, this is online booking, this very uh, market level. So at the central, why we develop this, we also work with market partners. For example, Blibli in Indonesia to allow online booking, uh, appointment booking, and so on. We're still exploring this with them, yeah? No. And then we also work very closely with uh, immigration department. So MHTC is granted the permission to do medical visa uh, application and extension on behalf of the patient. So this is something that, you know, the trust that we have gained from uh, internal stakeholders, especially immigration. Right? So we also work with um, hotels, accommodation providers, to ensure that the hotel facilities are patient-friendly. The ramp, you know, if they have the bar holding. So all these are they uh, patient-friendly. And also we work with wellness and rehab providers. So this would be, you know, everything that would help in fast recovery, recuperation. And we also work with a tech partner to provide translation services. So we distributed about 20, 30 um, of this device to all our private hospitals. So this is very easy when you speak in Mandarin and it will automatically translate to English. If you speak in Bangladesh, it automatically translates to English. Right? So we are um, you know, in, uh, developing the industry on this. So we also, we, uh, MHTC sits right in between public and private. We work very closely with all these government uh, agencies as well as private players to ensure that there's you know, good digital adoption in the ecosystem. Right? So this is another catalytic initiative that MHTC is doing with our uh, flagship finalists. So uh, if some of you may be aware of this, but for those who are not, I'll just quickly explain. Yeah? 
we have a national medical tourism flagship uh, program that is ongoing now. It was launched by the health minister last year. So we have all these uh, hospitals uh, that were selected and shortlisted to be groomed as torch bearer for medical tourism. All right, this is just like you know your idol, you know music idol, academy fantasia kind of concept. Okay, so we have screened two hundred um, about two hundred over healthcare facilities, and uh, based on a few selected criteria, we these four are shortlisted for their medical service excellence and also international branding. And these are all government enablers who are in the technology sandbox. So one of the improvements that we are doing under this flagship program is to have um, a sandbox to accelerate uh, the pace of innovation in Malaysia. A lot of us know that the talent in Malaysia is really good. You know, I always claim, you know, proudly tell this uh, in all the conferences I speak, right? I can safely say 60-70% of the doctors you see in Singapore are Malaysian doctors. And the nurses you see there are also Malaysian uh, nurses. About 30%, 40% of the nurses you see in Saudi are Malaysian nurses. So when it comes to technology, we do, I mean, sorry, uh, talent, we do have very good talent in place. However, uh, there are other factors that, you know, slows down the pace of innovation. So with Sandbox like this, our objective is to accelerate innovation pace. And we want to also improve medical excellence, operational, increase operational excellence, and um, you know, uh, foster long-term effective relationship through this. Yeah? The next digital initiative that we are doing is MHI, which is Malaysia, uh, Malaysia Healthcare uh, Intel. So this Intel platform, is basically uh, an integrated uh, data integration platform with AI uh, embedded in it. So we work with uh, immigration department to analyze um, travel data. We work with MAHB to analyze flight data. So we consolidate data from different sources, about eight different sources, uh, including MOH and you know, KDN and MM2H and so on to give us a comprehensive data analysis of the potential of healthcare industry. So when it comes to healthcare, um, some, some people may think, why are we just speaking about medical tourism? See, medic, the uh, medical tourism brings a, a, a number of value uh, to the country because we benchmark ourselves against global players and regional players. So we need to ensure our service deliveries of international standard. So while, when we promote this, we, you know, there's like, you know, uh, an indirect effect to the healthcare quality here in Malaysia, right? And also we pull in investment into Malaysia, we create the demand and we make sure that uh, the supply is sufficient and of international quality to everyone, not just foreign patients. Yeah, uh, We use this funnel because we want to benchmark our healthcare quality to that of international standard. But the beneficiaries are you know, locals and whoever residing in Malaysia, whoever come to Malaysia for treatment. Okay, That's how we have to look at this. Next is MHR. This is actually a repository system. It's a closed community platform just like your student portal. So we have Harvard uh, student portal, right? Like that, any university. So that student portal, similar to that, access is given to all our stakeholders, yeah? To get material about Malaysia Healthcare, marketing kit, brand CI. Yeah? And also, it has all e-learning courses. So you want to be trained a medical uh, facilitator then you can take a um, you know few a series of courses here in uh, on our platform to be certified as healthcare facilitator by MHTC. Currently, we are doing this physically, so uh, tour uh, tour agents or the frontliners at hospital they come to our office for training. So we provide them training. We do also provide uh, training to um, international uh, referral agents and patient referral centers about Malaysia healthcare. 
So the referral becomes a lot more easier. They are well worth of all uh, the value proposition that Malaysia has against uh, Compact. All right, next. Okay, this is what um, you know. I was telling about our partnership with Malaysia Genomics uh, Research Center. We are now going into scientific wellness. We have just kick-started uh, this initiative this year where we want to use data to promote wellness. So wellness within medical definition is not spa, yoga, those, right? It's how are you preventing diseases? How are you remaining healthy and, you know, full of wellness, right? So we are working with that. Uh, to do genome uh, sequencing, DNA uh, wellness, and pharmacogenetics. So very targeted treatment based on your genetic making. So this, um, it's, it's going pretty well. And we are also collaborating with international uh, bodies that does all this genomic screening. Okay. All right. So this is, um, you know, you guys are investors and I'm coming from medical tourism. Uh, I hope that, you know, we both can, you know, speak the same language, right? So here is a study that uh, we conducted uh, together with MIDA. Um, you, know, you guys know MIDA, right? To see a healthcare investment uh, landscape in Malaysia. Um, we wanted to build Malaysia's uh, capability through funding. And we, we need to uh, look at both FDIs and DDIs uh, into the country, right? So this is just uh, one slider, but the report is about 500-page report. Very detailed into Malaysia's uh, value proposition, a competitive edge against uh, regional investment hotspots in medical device manufacturing, pharma R&D, technology, and so on. So it's a very detailed uh, report. I think, you know, if any one of you are interested into uh, healthcare investment, then we can definitely work very closely and we, we, we are happy to share the, the report. So here, public investment is 82% uh, uh, goes to OPEX. So this is, um, uh, and then 18% uh, investment, 2% in R&D and ICT uh, development. So when government funding goes right, we, we, if we were to compare this to Singapore, their percentage split for R&D investment technology is much higher than OPEX. Why? Because the charge is different. Their healthcare uh, system uh, mechanism is different. Ours, we provide healthcare for free, right? heavily subsidized, especially in the public sector. So government investment is mostly for OPEX. Right, so uh, the 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 I mean the consultant suggested that we have very good excellent facility, but we need to increase our investment, especially into ICT and R um, and R and D. Right, so in what area within ICT, what is the ROI? We have all the data. Um, we meaning uh, us and um, uh, MIDA, so we can definitely work together if uh, there is uh, interest in that. All right. Next would be uh, private investment. FDI generally main uh, on main healthcare investment source. FDI in Malaysia is about 46%. Singapore gets about uh, 30, 63% of the total investment. Thailand gets 68 and Vietnam gets 78. So the split between FDI versus DDI. So we see that Malaysia has the highest DDI that goes into healthcare uh, investment, right? This, uh, this speaks the trust that we have in DDI, right? And also the potential for FDI and so on, right? And Malaysia's FDI is mostly for uh, manufacturing. So it becomes, uh, Malaysia is an investment hotspot for all manufacturing related uh, you know, businesses. So it can be, you know, your glove, your consumables, your medical devices, and so on. Why? Because again, resources are much cheaper, and then the connectivity, you can export it very well, and you have regional countries like Singapore, you know, uh, Japan, and so on, that you can attract medical device manufacturers to host their factories, manufacturing factories here in Malaysia. So this is definitely a potential. It's already doing well. But if you're looking at future area, 
that is not being invested now but has future investment, greater ROI, it would be R&D and ICT, right? Next. So healthcare investment trend. So here investment in Malaysia is still concentrated non-tech healthcare devices with a small number of low value tech investment, like what I say, uh, non-tech manufacturing mostly. So that is because, you know, uh, encouraging technology and also deep tech regulation to support. So we identify the gap in that and we are already addressing the gap. So uh, as we are addressing through our sandbox and so on, we see that potential adoption is high. We're already getting uh, interest from FDIs uh, in this particular uh, segment in Malaysia, right? And then um, investment criteria, main criteria for services is local demand. Locally, we do have a lot of demand and manufacturing, uh, sorry, demand for manufacturing, uh, manufacturing, what is this? Demand, local and regional demand for uh, device manufacturing, all right? So that, that actually is the main, uh, main criteria, right? And then uh, investment criteria for private equity is uh, profitably, very, very general statement, yeah? So medical tourism trend, see, um, because of medical tourism, the fact that we are increasing Malaysia's competitiveness regionally and globally, we are getting a lot of support from the government. Uh, we have shown this to EPU, Economic Planning Unit, and medical tourism is one of the, uh, you know, I think 12 or 10 key economic growth areas for the country. Because um, the, the, I mean, the investment that we make in attracting them and the ROI we are getting is far greater. So you see every, let's say, for example, China, Chinese patient coming in for treatment, IVF treatment, they spend nothing less than, you know, 100,000. That's nothing less, you know, one patient. So we are attracting a lot more and they spill over to all other industries. And we are aggressively promoting cardiology and oncology. So while creating the demand, we are also here making sure the hospitals are also uh, scaled up and geared up to meet the demand. And uh, we encourage investment. Um, government also provides additional grants, additional ITAs to support hospitals to uh, invest in technology. So we, we, we are also lobbying stakeholders to develop Malaysia's uh, capability. Yeah? And also we speak to international um, you know, investment bodies to look into Malaysia as an, in, uh, uh, an investment de de destination. Um, currently, um, Indonesia is definitely emerging as an investment hotspot. We see Vietnam is also, but they are playing in their own arena. We are not going to compete, right? There's nothing to compete. It's like a lot, the, it's, it's, a, it's an ocean out there. So we can build based on the values that we have, the value proposition we have to attract investment, or we also encourage local investors to invest in new potential areas, right? So anyone who are interested can definitely, you know, reach out to us. And so this is basically, you know, um, you know, a, a top summary, five key takeaway for uh, greater growth in healthcare travel through cross-industry collaboration at ASEAN level. Currently, we are doing ASEAN, we are prioritizing ASEAN level collaboration. We are also doing APEC level co collaboration. So moving forward, as we are doing this um, in the next two years, uh, we also prelude into uh, 2026 to 2030, right? So there we want to also collaborate with global players and attract a lot more people to Malaysia to look at Malaysia as a medical um, destination. Oh, that's it. Thank you very much. Any question? Uh, hi, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, in case if you have any question, please uh, raise your hand and walk towards the mic. Thank you.
yeah, so as I was saying, um, many a times when we speak to the institutional investor, um, for example, Thailand usually comes out as the main uh, tourist um, foreign patient destination. And they always pose the question to us as being a Malaysian healthcare provider um, in the private setting, how do we compete ourselves with Thailand because they give such great um, hospitality service, clinical outcomes are excellent as well, and they attract a lot of Middle Eastern patients. So how is Malaysia positioning itself to take that market share? Because from a pricing perspective, um, you know, Malaysia is also priced a lot more affordable in that aspect as well. So what are the strategies that you're taking to, like I say, take market share from destinations like um, Thailand? Um, for us, we don't see Thailand as a competitor, although, you know, it looks like they are a competitor, but we work very closely with them. We work with Bermang Red, uh, you know, uh, sea levels, um, because our objective is to ensure every patient gets good healthcare uh, services. And our objective is to make sure that Asia Pacific grows as a region that provides medical for affordable price. We want to make sure that uh, inflation is lesser because we learn from other parts of the world, right? So that's the ultimate objective. So that's first. Second is uh, Thailand is positioned in completely different arena. It, the country branding is far greater than Malaysia, right? So they have very good perception about the country. I, I mean, they referring to medical tourists, right? They have good perception about Thailand as a country. Thailand's hospitality, Thailand food, Thailand, amazing Thailand and all, right? So they are com positioned in completely different uh, arena. For MH, uh, for Malaysia, MHCC's effort would be to, when we speak to our potential uh, partners, collaborators and so on, we just speak about how good we are and the kind of services we provide. We, we give, I mean, choices to them to pick. If they want to experience, you know, wellness, they want to experience other things, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, medical tourists are free to choose. Malaysia's value propositions a lot in affordability. So what we, affordability that comes with quality. We have 13 fee schedule. So Thailand doesn't have it. So it's actually driven by market dynamic, demand and supply. Whereas in Malaysia, the government provides a guideline to all private hospitals for every treatment that they charge. I mean, we have IHH here. So they, sh they, they definitely say it wrong, Jalani, if it is wrong, right? So government actually provides that. So even if you are international patient or local patient going to hos private hospitals, you're charged the same, right? So there's no biasness in that. And also, uh, so that we promote. A lot, yeah. Quality that is uh, regulated by the government of Malaysia. So that's uh, the way we position ourselves. Um, I can tell, um, you know, IHH is here. We do get a lot of Singaporeans coming to Malaysia to continue the cancer treatment here in Malaysia. Yeah. So the cancer treatment in Singapore is very expensive. And the treatment, the drugs, the technology, the talent is similar to that of Malaysia but at one third of the price that they pay in Singapore. So we educate them about this. It's all about perception, you know, country's perception. So we think Singapore is a lot developed than Malaysia. So people's perception is different. So we educate them about this. For those who have like exhaust, exhausted their, uh, you know, insurance coverage, who need to continue treatment here in Malaysia, they come, you know, here to uh, Malaysian hospitals. And a lot of them get treated and they go back. You know, again, coming back to the same point, the doctors you see in Singapore are all Malaysian trained. Not all. Safely, I can say 60, 70% of them are Malaysian educated, trained and experienced doctors. So that is how we position. Yeah. We also work very closely. I mean, I think my team visited IHH group uh, in Singapore. So even with hospitals and regulators in Singapore, we work very closely. You know, we don't treat each other as competitors, but rather collaborators to improve healthcare quality in the region. Any other question?
Yes, correct. So uh, about 80%, 80 to uh, 85 percent of our volume revenue coming from Indonesia, and from investment point of business point of view, like we are placing our eggs in one basket, it's very risky, right? So we are diversifying into other markets and into China. Yes, organic demand is coming uh, for fertility. We are pushing cardiology, oncology. We are going to Bangladesh because of the volume. We are targeting elite and super elite people through our strategic partner in Bangladesh, GD Assist. GD Assist is uh, an insurance provider and they, ha they have good network with banks and you know, all this elite group. So they funnel in you know, uh, super rich patients from Bangladesh to Malaysia. So we are targeting that. But of course, if ordinary people, you know, mid-tier, they want to come, they can afford treatment here in Malaysia, we welcome them. And we also go to Middle East. Middle East is definitely an expensive market and everybody targeting Middle East, right? So it's becoming a bit crowded there. Uh, Korea is going to Middle East, Thailand is going to Middle East and so on. So our strategy for Middle East is a lot on the national strategy. If MOH is going to Oman, then we ride on MH, uh, uh, MOH agenda. So ours is G to G, especially for Middle East. Um, we want to get our hospitals and paneled in their uh, preferred destination list for their government officials. So we are not heavily investing in commercial activities in Middle East. Cost is a factor. And, you know, we are getting government funds. So we are very prudent in where we are spending our money, right? It's tax money. So we're very careful in that. So we don't want to spend where we don't get um, ROI more than you know 50, 50 times. So, and we are also making inroads to uh, Australia. So there is an organic demand uh, from Australia for bariatric fertility and aesthetic. So we saw the number coming in. We have never done any activities in uh, uh, Australia, but we saw that the numbers actually growing exponentially. So there's purely organic through word of mouth. And then, so now we are planning to go to Australia, but it will be very targeted. We want to hire referral, uh, you know, agent. It could be, you know, whoever we are still exploring. Yes. And also, um, recently, uh, we did a brand health study in a number of uh, regional countries to see how well is our brand, as in Malaysia healthcare, is resonating in these markets, right? you'll be very surprised the awareness of Malaysia healthcare against competitors is still low, right? But the retention is very high, meaning one, once you experience Malaysia, you're going to come again and again and again. And a lot of them, I mean, you have seen KOLs, people, you know, willingly, KOCs, you know, they, they tell their testimony on TikToks and so on, why they choose Malaysia as a destination to retire, right? So once they experience it, and then they like the culture, they like the food, they like the people, then they decide to, uh, you know, reside here. Likewise, once they experience Malaysia healthcare, the retention is very high. They come again, their parents come, and then the word spreads. Yeah, so that's a very uh, good question. Yeah. 
Right. Uh, I'll take uh, first question first, right? Um, for brain drain, yes, we are experiencing a lot of brain drain, not just in healthcare, but I think in almost all uh, industries, right? For nurses especially, we are working with Productivity Nexus and then Dr. later Dr. Dr. Kuljit, who's also part of it. How are we going to retain our nurses, right? That's beyond MHTC's mandate, but we do you know, lobby stakeholders, we influence them, we tell them why it's very important to retain, that's one thing. Second would be to hire foreign nurses. We had that before, we did try something, I think back in 20, 10, if I'm not mistaken, we did hire nurses from India, uh, Philippines, and so on. Uh, but again, uh, what happened to that program? Uh, what is the continuity? Something that MOH, productivity nexus that need to uh, answer. But of course, from a uh, you know private sector, they all want to hire nurses, right? So we are de uh, definitely lobbying stakeholders towards that. We are doing our part. So that's question number one. I don't know when it's going to happen, but we are trying our best uh, to increase again our capability, right? We need talents abroad also to come in and share um, some of the best practice in their home country. So that's one. Number two, your question about everything that is non-clinical, right? So currently we are very focused, you're absolutely true, we are very focused on curative, very clinical, but at MOH level, we are moving towards preventive care. Um, so we are promoting preventive care, but step-down care, uh, all this rehab, is that what you're saying, right? So rehab and all this, yeah, we are doing that. We are lobbying stakeholders on this. We are also developing a governance on, on this, right from data uh, reporting and so on. And um, currently, the one that, you know, that comes to my mind is... Um, uh, aged care example not we are not talking about palliative care but active retirement it's another pilot that mhtc is doing but it's still you know uh, i mean we have we are yet to launch it so it's not here on the screen so we are working with moh to ensure there's proper regulation for all uh, active retirement facilities out there and then there is proper you know data recording funding tax and so on as we are moving you know beyond um, beyond the core clinical to step down care to preventive care to you know uh, age uh, active retirement and so on non clinical part but yes currently it's very much focused on clinical and curative we are i mean while we are developing we are also promoting it so it's like chicken and egg you have to need to have data to support regulatory changes but you need regulation in place to attract people to come in. So we are, it's chicken and egg. So we have to do this parallelly. So we are. Thanks, uh, Shalani. Uh, I have one question. I think uh, we understand that Penang has been one of the uh, key revenue contributor in terms of health tourism. Uh, I mean, in your in opinions, uh, what do you think uh, the foreign tourists prefer Penang uh, over KL? And what are the initiatives to drive uh, tourist visitation to other states? Okay, great. So number one, why Penang, right? Penang, uh, from state level performance, is still top performer. About 40% is coming from, of the revenue coming from Penang hospitals alone. So if you want to know why Penang, you have to look at the connectivity part and historic travel between Penang and Medan. Not any parts of Indonesia or any other country. Yeah? It's Medan to Penang. So Medan to Penang is just 40 minutes by flight. It's like you're going to KL. Let's just go. I do have patients who like fly in in the morning, get a uh, health screening done, and fly back at night. So it's that, uh, you know, near. And um, the people in Medan... They do have family in Penang. So it's like goes back to many decades ago. So hence that traffic between Medan and Penang. But if you're looking at uh, international patients from different parts of the world, different cities of Indonesia, it's actually Klang Valley. Kuala Lumpur, Selangor, um, to a certain extent Malacca. And then we do have Sabah, Sarawak. So Sabah would be, you know, we do see uh, Koreans because of the direct flight to Sabah. We see a lot of Koreans to Sava, 
we see um, you know pinoy philippines going to sabah as well sarawa we see indonesian from kalimantan crossing the border to sarawa hospitals so if you are you're asking more on like uh, from other parts of the world and because of the uh, yeah, because of the initiative we do it would be all these uh, states as compared to penang penang has like long history why yeah and also now um, we let penang penang is very mature they can go on their own right so we are profiling other states yeah creating new opportunities for investment for investors and even you know giving more options to our uh, medical tourists to choose from and of course johor johor being very close to singapore and johor state involvement bpan and irda is quite good to make johor a medical tourism hub madini as a hub right um, again to cater to singaporeans who want to get treated in malaysia so we do see some states actively investing in attracting foreign patients as well while not compromising the you know quality and the services for locals Any question from the floor? Michelle, any thanks for the presentation. I just have one question. I understand that this medical tourism thing, right? The patient used to be very uh, comfortable with certain provider, and the switching barrier is tends to be quite tough. So, in your perspective, right? How can we, you know, in Malaysia perspective, right, offer you know the kind of uh, value that you know they can. switch over is this important this group of uh, patients uh, clients important or we are in a way creating a new ocean where you know more uh, medical tourists you know the new medical tourists so that, that is my question okay great so again um, we let's say assuming let's say the patient is going to thailand and how are we going to break the trust and take them to uh, malaysia right Um, if you ask me from a strategy point of view, I wouldn't want to do that. Uh, There's a lot of work to break brand trust, and especially from uh, you know patient point of view, you have like long history with this particular provider. They know your medical history. For the patient's benefit, I wouldn't want to do that. At the end of it, we all want to make sure that the patient gets the best, right? So normally, uh, the strategy is. to acquire new patients so like new people people new segment that never got the right uh, treatment at their home country they can afford better treatment abroad so that is the segment that we target so that's for country to country yeah same applies to hospital let's say let's say we are di- want to divert the traffic from penang to kl no that's definitely not what we are taking so we want to acquire new segments in every country even we do have like uh, patients you know from i think um who um uh, this there was this one incident that this particular patient i don't want to mention which country so go, that country uh, a group of them through their insurance provider they were going to a particular country right for treatment so uh Uh, we established partnership with this particular insurance company and they wanted to you know divert the traffic to malaysia and then we definitely say no because it's not good for the patient uh, because in our healthcare system there's no seamless da- data transfer or medical report transfer to another new facility they need to start everything from zero all right every screening from zero all right so there's still no hospital to hospital transfer of information yet so we don't want patients to go through that if you are ha- happy you are going there for 5 years 10 years please proceed there's a lot more that uh, we can target
we are doing it. So only if, let's say, for example, yeah, uh, just taking China, for example, and this couple uh, is undergoing fertility treatment, certain procedures, certain drugs are not available in China. So we partner with this hospital. So we have a referral agent in China, Hangzhou, and that agent has hospital, partnership with hospitals. So for treatment not available in China, then we continue here in Malaysia. So again, it goes back to the interest of every individual. We want to make sure they get access to high quality care at affordable pricing. Whatever that's not available in their country, they can definitely. So we are collaborating with hospitals um, from different geographies. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking our moderator, An Chun Song, and our guest speaker, Ms. Shalani Andrea Pandian, for the insightful presentation. And let's give them a round of applause. <laughs>